Hey all, I wanted to share a photo with you, but I'll start by saying for nearly a decade, I worked in the New York State Capitol as a low-level staffer for the New York State Assembly. And occasionally, I would uh, take pictures of the assembly chamber when things were slow. And I snapped this photo in uh, late June 2014, towards the end of the session. It's of Dick Gottfried of Manhattan. He is um, a fossil. He was elected in like 1969 when he was in his 20s and now he's like 100 years old and here you see him with another guy also like 100 years old. And, um, but he was debating medical marijuana but this isn't about him or, or medical marijuana. It's actually about the woman sitting next to him, Gabriela Rosa. And it's also just about politicians in general. See, at the time that this photo was taken, Rosa was communicating with the Department of Justice because she was about to be charged with immigration fraud. Yes, she, a person from the Dominican Republic, had gotten elected to the state assembly, but apparently had lied during the process of becoming a citizen, which is quite serious, particularly if you end up holding public office. What I thought was just so strange about this was I took the photo and I didn't think anything of it. And then about a week or so later, after session's over, there's this news story. Assemblywoman Rosa is being charged with immigration fraud. And the sad thing was Assemblywoman Rosa really was not an aberration. In my time working for the Assembly, I can't even count how many members of the Assembly or the Senate were arrested charged and oftentimes convicted of state and federal crimes. And I think to a lot of people, we know that there's corruption in politics, but to me, this just serves to remind me that politicians are generally pretty unimpressive people. They're at best just people like you and me and oftentimes really flawed. If you've seen the movie Election with Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick, you kind of see what I'm getting at. But anyways, just looking now back on it, it's it's really quite amazing because we live in a hyper-partisan time when people really get behind politicians. You know, they're either on the red team or the blue team, but no matter what, people are looking to politicians for guidance and inspiration and solutions to the problems that they face. And I got to tell you, generally speaking, the people that get elected, these, these aren't really noble people. And I say that because I, I got to see it a lot. People that did what uh, Rosa did, which was to abuse the public trust, to aggrandize themselves. We had this uh, gentleman, Assemblyman Boyland. He, he didn't even introduce bills or do anything. All I know is he was twice charged with federal crimes related to kickbacks and influence peddling. The first time he was acquitted. The second time he got caught and he was convicted and ended up in prison. And it wasn't just him. I mean, there was a woman when I first started who bribed a, a, a developer. She would get him a favor and he would build her a house. And sometimes the, the criminality went beyond it. I mean, in my time there, something like three Senate presidents were indicted and at least one of them sent to prison for uh, federal crimes. Our assembly speaker is now serving time in prison. And just to add on to that, uh, we've had uh, two of our last three governors have to resign over um, sexual issues. And um, that's, it's pretty embarrassing when you see these people. I mean, people who have given so much trust and so much admiration and they're just sleazy, sleaze bags like the rest of us. I look at a guy like Assemblyman, or former Assemblyman Micah Kellner, and he touted his, himself as the first openly bisexual member of the New York State Legislature. I mean, he would talk about it a lot. And um, he ended up getting in trouble for um, 
sexually harassing staff. I think both men and women, which is true to himself, I suppose. And then there was this Dennis Gaberzak. He couldn't stay away from interns. And then there was this uh, Sam Hoyt. I remember him. And he he didn't go to jail or anything, but he got his emails uncovered. And so people, they get surprised that you have people like uh, politicians like Anthony Weiner. You know, they're, they're surprised. Like, how could this guy, you know, take pictures of his genitalia? And he's a public servant. And I'm thinking to myself, no, that, that's, that's kind of what they do. A lot of politicians don't see themselves as accountable because they're not held accountable. And so the things that they do just get really bad. When I was with the assembly, there was a Republican assemblyman from somewhere up in the, near the Canadian border. I mean, what he did was awful. He was arrested for trying to get children and it was really bad. I mean, this was one of the worst things, if, if not the worst that I'd ever heard of. And that's even more shocking than Senator Hiram Montserrat, who even before being sworn in as a senator was arrested for attacking his then girlfriend with a drinking glass. And that was something he wasn't even really held accountable for. He ended up going down on criminal charges related to kickbacks or something like that. And none of this is specific to one party or the other. If Democrats are in control in New York, they're the ones that are gonna get arrested more. If Republicans are in control in another state, they'll be the ones getting arrested. It's just these people, they're not held accountable often. And the strangest thing is that we vote for them. They were elected. Somebody said, hey, that man or that woman should represent me. And I think about somebody like Dennis Hastert, who was Speaker of the House representatives just a few years ago, ended up have, going to prison for awful thing kind of covering up sexual abuse that he had carried out years before and and really he only went down because there was a, a financial aspect it's it's troubling to see people lionize politicians you know team red and team blue do this we see this every week when alexandria alexandria ocasio cortez or ted cruz spar about i don't know anything global warming or abortion or, or whatever People take a side and they think that these people would care about them, but they probably wouldn't pee on you if you were on fire. You see this with the up and comers like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who amassed this big following of people. And do you really think that any of these politicians care? Do you think that Nancy Pelosi really gives a crap about you? None of these people do. I don't think the last two presidents have given a crap about us. I don't even think their predecessors really give a crap about us. Politicians are people who are always seeking something above them, some other office. And what's the highest office in the land? It's the presidency, where you have the ability to drop a nuclear weapon on another country. I mean, it takes a special type of person to want to be able to nuke somebody. And so looking at Assemblywoman Rosa, who spent some time in prison and is now out, I'm just reminded of how much faith we put in these people and, and how little of it they're actually deserving of. And I just want you to think about this. If you vote, the next time that you go into a, a voting booth, and particularly if you're considering voting for some young go get him whippersnapper of a candidate. Just think that for every politician who's gotten arrested, charged and convicted and sent up to the prison, there was somebody who voted for them. There was somebody who made the decision and said, you know, I want that person representing me in the mayor's office or the state legislature or in Congress or maybe the presidency. Because Gabriela Rosa, well, there's a lot of people in office that are just like her. 
So thank you for letting me share this photo and story. God bless you.